sometimes when I'm just looking at a blank page and I know I have to write something, my mind just goes completely blank and I just don't know what to put down. So I use this trick to help make it easier for myself and I hope it makes writing fun and easy for you too. So I want you to start with a blank piece of paper and draw a line down the middle. On one side, you're going to record things that a scientist might be excited about. So things like facts that everyone in the room would agree with. Things that you can see or that can detect with your other senses. So for example, if I was looking at these caterpillars, my scientist eyes might notice things like they've got six legs, they've got a kind of creamy color, they're about two centimeters long, and they seem to like crawling around, exploring everything. So you can write about how things behave too. Now, on the other side of your piece of paper, I want you to draw a pair of poet's eyes or artist's eyes. And poets and artists are very interested in um, the sort of feelings and emotions that come into their minds when they're looking at things. So you might think, what do they remind me of? How do they make me feel? What different ways can I describe them to help someone else understand? So let's use our scientist's eyes and our poet's eyes to describe some of the different types of moths I use seen today. I'll give you a few minutes to pause the video and start writing different things in both columns. Get your scientist eyes and poet's or artist's eyes sheets ready so you can record information as I tell you about some more of the amazing moths found around the world. Remember, you can pause the video at any point to give yourself some time to write down things that you observe and things that you feel and think and connect with the pictures and words that you're hearing. Now, lots of other moths mimic the plants or surfaces they rest on, like our peppered moths. These are buff tip moths, they're found in the UK, and they look exactly like broken twigs. And you can imagine that would be an incredibly good disguise, because what bird wants to eat a broken twig? Other moths disguise themselves as scary animals. Remember our atlas moth with its wings that look like two large pythons? But some smaller moths do that too. What do you think these ones are mimicking? Well, one of these is a wasp and one is a moth. Some moths disguise themselves as something more disgusting than a wasp. This is a wood nymph and when it's got its wings spread out and it's flying around, it looks like it has a beautiful pattern. But when it's resting on a surface, it looks just like bird poop. Not so beautiful now, but a very good disguise because what bird wants to eat poop? But it's a very weird and wonderful world. And there's bound to be an animal out there that thinks bird droppings are delicious. So this moth has a pattern that looks like a bird dropping, but also looks like two flies eating that bird dropping. So that if an animal comes down to have a nibble, it will think that the flies have got there first. And you can see in this picture just how good an adaptation that is. How did you find that? Did it sometimes get tricky? Did you sometimes not know, quite know which column to put things in? Did you sometimes come up with an idea that you wanted to put in both columns? That's because the scientist eyes and the artist eyes aren't as different as we might think. Science and art are both about exploring the world around us and coming up with ways to explain and describe it. So they actually belong very well together. Now we're going to try and combine the ideas you wrote down on your paper to make your own short science poem about moths. Now we're going to use a type of poem that's very, very, very short called a haiku. So short, in fact, it just has three lines. Now I'm not going to dive straight in and start writing straight away. I'm going to let all my work notes do the work for me. So first I'm going to pick out some parts that I really like, some things I've written down almost without thinking. So I particularly like the fact about the atlas moth looking a bit like pythons when it's resting on a tree. Um, oh, I've also spotted some possible alliteration there which will work really well in the poem, so I'm just going to mark that up to remind myself later. 
I'm interested in the way that camouflage keeps moths safe and it keeps them safe from hungry eyes. I really like that phrase and I note it down. So I'm going to circle that. And the facts that I'm going to try and deliver in this poem, in this haiku, are about the way that the Atlas moth mimics a python. So now that I've got some ideas about what I'd like to write about, and I've already done the work in pulling out some phrases and lines I'd like to use, I'm going to start composing my psyche. Now, a psyche, like any haiku, has three lines. The first line has five syllables, the second has seven syllables, and the third line has another five syllables. So I'm going to look at what I've pulled out and see what might fit well, and edit it a little so it fits those patterns. So I end up with a haiku. Master of disguise. Well, I'm going to change that to masters of disguise. So I'm talking about all the different moths. Now I need a seven syllable line. Let's see. I want to talk about their patterns. Whose patterns? Mm, it's a bit boring, isn't it? Let's try something else. Whose disguise I've used that, who's beautiful, mm, beautiful, isn't it a bit boring, oh I know, I could use that alliteration that I spotted earlier, whose python patterns, I really like that, so that's five syllables so far, so I'm just going to add the words, keep them safe, I'm going to have to push safe over onto the next line, so there's enough room for it. Safe from what? Well, oh, I already had a really good idea for that line. Keeps them safe from hungry eyes. So I can fit in from hungry eyes, making five syllables in total. So you can see how making those notes using our science eyes and our poet's eyes allow us to combine them and best of all, most of the work was done for us and all we had to do was put it together. I hope you had fun writing your psyches. If you'd like to do another challenge after World Book Day, you could write your psyches on a cutout of a paper moth. I'm sending your teacher a template and make a beautiful display of scientific poetry all over your classroom wall or your wall at home. And I'd love to see some of your psyches too. If your teacher would like to share them with me.